Hi everybody, it's Bill Straub with Modern Thirst and I've got a quick video for you here on something that uh, I've seen come up a few times on the different uh, message boards on the internet and I've had people ask me about it quite a bit recently, but it's really, uh, it comes down to a very fundamental question of people who do reviews like myself and, and my writers on our website. Um, do, can you really taste all those things that you talk about when they talk about, I don't know, caramel, vanilla, uh, licorice, bubble gum, uh, unicorn tits, whatever the case may be. Can you really taste all that or is it just a bunch of junk? Um, and if so, how can I learn to do that as well? The truth is, yeah, you can. And uh, the bottom line is that the, the more that you do this, the easier it becomes, the more you train your palate to, to really go after and, and find specific things. Uh, but it's not, the, it's not the hardest thing in the world. So we're gonna call this our Tasting Bourbon 101 um, video. And I hope you like it. Uh, the first thing is pick a vessel, pick a glass, something that you want to taste it in. There's all sorts of different whiskey glasses you can use. There's from a straight up rocks glass to a, a cognac uh, snifter to uh, the standard is pretty much called the uh, Glen Cairn glass. It's a uh, glass designed by, uh, by uh, some folks over in Scotland. Um, in, hand in hand with some of the distillers of, of scotch. Uh, it works really well. It's got a nice handle so that you can hold it and still get a good look at what's inside it. Um, got a nice uh, nice fat bowl at the bottom that you can you can keep plenty of whiskey in it. It flares, the, the lid of it, the, the rim flares just a little bit to allow a little bit of aromas to get out. Uh, but let's let's kind of go through what it takes to, to taste a whiskey and, and how you can train yourself to taste different flavors in it. First thing the first, Pour yourself at least enough whiskey in that glass so that it's going to give you some good aromas and you can get a good, good taste of it. If you just pour a little splash in the bottom that barely covers the glass, uh, you're not really going to get anything out of that. So the first things you want to do is pick up that glass and take a look at it. Uh, you, you can tell a lot of things by looking at a whiskey. How dark it is, how light it is, you can tell it whether it's been heavily filtered or whether perhaps there's something wrong with the bottle and the whiskey's oxidized a little bit if it's really cloudy. Um, if it's really dark, it's probably spent some time in either some heavily, heavily uh, charred barrels or it's been a long time in barrels. It could have been from the higher floors of the warehouse um, where it's a lot hotter. Uh, but take a look at that whiskey and find out whether it's crystal clear and very light colored, whether it's dark, which can speak to age, things like that. Uh, second thing is the nose or the aromas. Uh, the only thing I would really, really tell you about this one is don't stick your nose all the way in the glass and don't close your mouth because taste and smell are very closely related. You don't want to cut one out of the picture. So leave your mouth open, put your nose just above the rim of the glass and, and get a good whiff of what's in there. Now be careful if this is a really high proof whiskey, this can be a little hard on the nose, uh, but you can train yourself to, to handle that as well. Uh, so just put your nose just above it, give it a good whiff, both nostrils. You don't really need to get too much into this. We're not, this isn't the most pretentious thing in the world. This is bourbon. Uh, so just you know, take a good smell of it. Spend some time with it and, and think really, really closely about what you actually smell as opposed to just bourbon. What type of flavors are, are in there? What type of smells? And then obviously the next part is everyone's favorite part and that's tasting it. When you taste it, you want to take a big drink of it, big swig, enough to coat the inside of your mouth, swish it around a little bit, chew on it a little bit before you swallow it. You don't want to swallow it right away. Let that whiskey um, interact with, the, the, with all of your taste buds. Breathe in a little bit through your mouth when, you, when, when you're doing this so that you get a little bit of oxygen mis mixing with it. And think about what you're tasting on your taste buds. There's different zones of taste from the front to the back. But take a big swig. And here's the key part. If you want to if you want to learn how to discern all these different flavors, a really easy tool to use is to start out with a, a tasting wheel. We've got one on the website. I'm going to post it here on the, on the video for you to see, and I'll, I'll post a link to it as well on the website if you want to download it and print it off. But in a general sense, a whiskey wheel is a round wheel, and in the center you have the tier one or, or the, most, uh, the biggest, more overarching flavors, so wood, um, sweet, spice, floral, things like that. Uh, you don't have to get too specific with it if it's a very sweet bourbon to you. Start out with sweet. Outside of that, on the next tier are some slightly more specific types of sweet. It could be honey, it could be sugar, it could be brown sugar, things like that. So they're getting a little more specific, but not so specific that we're talking again about those unicorn tits that we don't, don't really take very seriously. From that, you can go out one more tier and you can get very specific on it very specific wedding cake icing, uh, is it chocolate, things like that. 
Uh, and you can find this for all these general flavors, just like oak. Is it, is it, do you taste oak in that wood or do you taste cedar? Because, I mean, everyone's been in a cedar closet or smelled cedar compared to another wood. It's a very different aroma. Very, it should be a very different flavor, too. Take that a step farther. If it's oak, does it, does it taste like you're sitting inside an old canoe house on a lake? Is it, is it old, musty wood or is it freshly sawn oak? Um, those, are, those are how you, you get from a general flavor to these more specifics. And you just train yourself. You may not be able to get much past tier one or tier two starting out, but eventually you will. You'll be able to differentiate between the two whiskeys. And the last thing to think about is the finish, and that's what happens after you swallow it. Um, after you swallow a whiskey, you should have uh, some idea of whether or not it's a, a dry finish, um, whether it's a long finish. If it's, if it's a short finish, it means it's very dry, the flavors kind of dissipate quickly, it's very gone, it's gone very quickly after you swallow it. If it's a long finish, it means it hangs around, flavors develop, you get some bitterness, some pops from barrel tannins, things like that. So pay attention to those finishes as well. There, there are flavors that develop after you swallow, believe it or not. Um, and, and it's just like the flavor wheel, that the same type of flavors can develop. A lot of times it's, you catch a lot of rye uh, because you have a lot of the sweet on the palate and then the rye on the back end if it's a rye bourbon. Um, so that's essentially the way it works. If you care to go even farther and think about the way um, reviewers like Modern Thirst actually score bourbons, that's a very subjective thing and it's something that I laugh at myself a little bit. Um, I don't really want people to pay attention too much to the actual score so much as comparisons. If, if, if you look at our scoring system, it's a standard 100 point um, system. We do it because it, people can relate to it, not necessarily because it's the best way in the world to tell whether a bourbon is great or not. Um, but people can relate to it and what I really want people to pay attention to is, is find someone like me or, or one of our writers or another writer on another site that, whose palate seems to match yours, who seems to like the, the, the same things you do. Um, and listen to what they say. And if they score one whiskey a 91 and one a 90, it doesn't really mean much, 90 to 91. It just means that they probably like that 91 slightly better than the 90. So it gives you an idea of, of where it falls in a comparative setting. And that's really all the scoring can do for you because it, everyone scores differently and, and everyone's tastes are different. So again, find, find a reviewer, find a writer that you like um, and kind of follow them along. And you can, their scores should tell you where, how it relates to other bourbons that you probably tried. Um, I hope you like what we were talking about today. We're going to post some links on the website for you. To, to, we have a Tasting Bourbon 101 uh, article that's been up on our site for about three or four years. So you can check that out if you want to. If you like what we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash modernthirst. Every little bit helps. Um, and check us out at modernthirst.com. We, we have hundreds of whiskey reviews and lots of news and articles on the site. We're always posting more. We're always looking for new talent. So if you're interested in writing for us, um, feel free to log on and, and uh, contact us through the site as well. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers and have a great day.